post-COVID uh, fatigue, is, as we call it, long COVID, I think it's important to determine that this is just another form of a post-viral or post-infectious fatigue about which we've been treating patients for the last um, 30 years. It's just that the initial doctors who came across uh, patients with COVID had not really managed patients with post-viral fatigue, and so they gave it this new name of long COVID. Um, it is completely different to general fatigue. And I think that's the most important factor to understand. And unless you've ever really experienced it, you, patients or and doctors still find it very difficult to differentiate from fatigue. General fatigue is we are just a bit a bit tired. You've done too much. You know you're tired as a consequence. Uh, the post uh, COVID fatigue, post viral fatigue, is as though patients often describe it as though someone's just literally pulled the plug out. There is no gas in the tank whatsoever. And however much they want to do something, they just do not have the energy or the means uh, to do it. So it is an overwhelming um, fatigue. Those individuals who suffer the so-called long COVID, it's difficult to predict from the initial severity of the acute COVID. Sometimes that uh, disease, that flu-like illness, has been relatively mild. Sometimes it's been very severe. Uh, but that in itself does not seem to predict the occurrence of so-called long COVID. In my experience and on doing the appropriate testing, it's most usually in individuals who had previously, many, many years ago, had um, uh, severe glandular fever. And that is a real risk factor uh, for developing subsequent long COVID. Um, it also is much more common in individuals who are low in vitamin D um, and to a lesser extent, uh, low vitamin B12 levels. And so these are uh, factors we need to investigate and address. Um, and lastly, the other big trigger for, for this seems to be in individuals who are quite high achieving. They're used to running their lives, their professional lives, they're exercising at a high level, very, very busy. And a simple analogy is there's little, little spare capacity for them. And it doesn't take too much for something to sort of burst a fuse and to cause this uh, profound um, fatigue. Well, sadly, long COVID or post viral fatigue can last for uh, you know several months um, to really two to three years, sometimes uh, longer. Um, it is a devastating illness, um, and it takes very careful and slow uh, rehabilitation. Um, the a complete worst thing to do is to try and force yourself to get better and to not to listen to the body and say, you know, and it's quite an English characteristic, is quite stubborn and say, right, I'm going to get better. I'm not giving into this and just to try and force the body um, on. And that just makes it worse and worse. Um, so I think if you have uh, the overwhelming fatigue, uh, some of the other symptoms, the difficulty in concentrating, uh, so much so that often patients can't, can't work, uh, the temperature dysregulation, feeling hot and cold, uh, the poor sleep. Um, sometimes it's associated with what we call autonomic dysfunction, which is disruption of the autonomic nervous system that controls our blood pressure, our pulse, makes us feel dizzy, sometimes our gastric emptying, um, and that can result in things called POTS syndrome, postural orthostatic tachycardic syndrome, um, those are all reasons why you might also wish to seek specialist uh, medical um, att att attention. Unfortunately, we still don't know the exact uh, causes of the fatigue um, of so-called long COVID or indeed any post-viral or post-infectious fatigue. We can speculate that it's a lot of it is due to disruption of the mitochondria. And these are the energy generating parts of our cells um, and they are not working uh, properly. And so we don't generate the energy that we need, but quite why they should be disrupted, we still don't know. It is to some extent, all we do know is it is a disrupted immune response of our bodies against these infections. 
whether it be COVID or another um, viral illness. But what we can do is as part of our overall assessment is make sure that there are no other more easily treatable confounding uh, illnesses which might uh, influence the totality of symptoms and influence the fatigue. And one of those from my perspective as an endocrinologist is very much is the thyroid gland. So we need to make sure there's no suggestion of any underactive thyroid. It is assessment of the adrenal glands which makes our body's most important uh, hormone cortisol, our so-called stress hormone. So if that is low, then that will exacerbate the fatigue. And, and, and then we need to check the gonadal status and that they're producing sufficient uh, testosterone. Um, other factors which are easily remediable are the vitamin D and the vitamin B12 um, levels. The strategy for managing a long COVID is, as I said earlier, is very slow and carefully graded rehabilitation. And that can often require a prolonged period of work and then a slow phased return. And it's important to liaise with the HR uh, and occupational health of the workplace so they understand it. Patients try and do too much too soon. They often adopt what we call a boom and bust phenomenon so when they feel slightly better, then they go back to full activities and indeed try and play catch up and do too much. And then they have a crash and they feel more, much more fatigued. They're unable to do anything before they slowly pick up again. And instead of doing that boom and bust, it's much easier just to reduce everything to a much lower level and then slowly um, pick it up. So those are the important underlying strategy, learning to listen to your body, learning to pace yourself, trying to avoid any emotional stress, because in my experience, that is the biggest drain on patients and um, limited energy uh, resources. So trying to keep as calm um, as possible. I've already mentioned that we need to address any coexisting endocrine uh, hormonal disorders, which might uh, adversely affect it. And it is leading as healthy a lifestyle as possible, good nutrition. Um, some patients find that an anti-inflammatory diet can be beneficial. Um, and I think perhaps uh, one of the more exciting developments, well, indeed the most exciting development that I've seen in the uh, last 25 years of treating, treating patients with post viral fatigue, and then more recently specifically long COVID, is the use of hyperbaric oxygen therapy, or HBOT, which in essence requires uh, patients to sit or lie in a pressurized chamber for 60 to 90 minute sessions, um, and then they breathe pure oxygen. And that seems to hyperperfuse the body with uh, high concentrations of oxygen and help the mitochondria to recover um, and the energy levels to improve. Now, it's only relatively recently that studies, have, some good, well-conducted scientific studies have shown this to be of uh, benefit. Um, but increasing numbers of patients are coming back to me saying, it, yes, it has been very helpful to them. Um, and they wish to uh, you know, continue with it. It seems you need a minimum of 10 sessions of this, and they should be as close together as possible. So ideally Monday to Friday for at least two weeks, but sometimes it takes up to 40 sessions, which is what the scientific studies uh, uh, used to see maximum um, benefit.